Hello people of the world, my name is Nisam and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very special interview which is brought to you by Kamar Block Tours as you can see as Suham with me. Hi and guys. Have, hi. Okay. And we have Shannon Hitchcock and NH Senzai. Both of them are the authors of Flying Over Water. And as you guys know, Kamar Block Tours is doing a block tour for the book. So we are super excited to have you here, both of you. And let's get this interview started. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, starting off, why don't we kind of break the ice and start with five random facts about yourself. So let's start with Mahesh. Can you give us five random facts about yourself? Wow. Random facts. I grew up in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia. I uh, love scuba diving. I love to cook. Mm -hmm. And my son is 13 and he cooks with me. Two more random facts. I, let's see, I uh, love to go skiing here in California in Lake Tahoe. And one more fact, I love to travel. Do you like to travel, Shannon? Do you like to travel as well? I do like to travel as well. Uh, I'm not nearly as well traveled as Nahid, though. Okay. Um, so, Shannon, why don't you go ahead and give us five facts about yourself? Um, I grew up in North Carolina. I have lived all over the United States. Um, I have a 27 year old son, which really makes me old. Um, I love the mountains. They're my favorite place to be, but my favorite place to vacation is the beach. We saw quite a bit of it, didn't we, Siham? Like the beaches in the book. So we basically, Siham and I, we buddy read the book and we finished today. So we were really speed reading through it to make sure that we have everything before the interview. And we absolutely love your book. Um, yeah, we absolutely loved it. It was amazing. Siham and I, we, were just, we had like voice notes after voice notes in our chat because we liked it so much. So how is the experience of co-authoring like? Have you done it before? Was it, so let's start with Nahid and let, let's go over to Shannon after. So Nahid, have you co-authored before? Have you done this, something like this before? Well, I mean, all, all you know, uh, respect goes to Shannon because um, actually this is Shannon's part where she usually talks about this all say a little bit. So Shan is, is the one who reached out to me because she already had a manuscript. And um, basically I um, read her manuscript and I, and I loved it. And I, I really connected with the story. So once, you know, uh, she reached out to me, um, we, we had a couple of phone calls together and we talked to each other um, to figure out, you know, if our personalities met because we had never met in person before. So we had some great phone conversations and realized, you know, Shannon would be a wonderful person to co-author what she's very open, open-minded, open to my ideas. And then what we did is we began our collaboration process at that point. Okay, so Shannon, how was it like for you since this was your manuscript? Um, you know, for me, it really was a journey. It started because a friend of mine, uh, her daughter converted to Islam, and that made me very curious. And so I started researching the religion. And then my minister had a, a picture in her office that she had taken when she was on vacation in Turkey. And it was of a Syrian woman and her young son, and they held a sign that said, we are from Syria, can you help us? So I wrote a book and the entire first draft was in a white Christian girl's point of view. And I started thinking about that. And I especially was paying attention to a lot of online uh, conversations around own voices. And I started worrying that I was not doing the story justice. And so I talked to my agent and decided that I wanted a co-author and I, started thinking about what I needed in a co-author. And of course, the first thing was I needed somebody who was Muslim. But the second thing, I really wanted somebody who was, who was uh, already familiar with the Syrian civil war because um, 
If not, that was going to take a lot of time to research. So I read Nahid's book, Escape from Aleppo, and she was the only person I ever formally asked. But I went to my agent and I said, I just read this book. It's a middle grade novel. It's great. This author would already be very familiar with the Syrian civil war. I think she'd be the perfect person to collaborate with. And so my agent sent Nahid's agent a, um, an email and they asked to read the manuscript. And then we went from there. Okay, that's great. That was actually pretty like, I never thought there was actually first manuscript and then it went to somebody else. So that was pretty enlightening. Thanks for sharing that. So Siha, why don't you go ahead and ask some of your questions? All right, okay. So um, I'm gonna kick off the first question about something food related because I love food myself. <laughs> and I've noticed that in the book, there were a lot of mentions of Middle Eastern food, especially like Syrian cuisine. And since I'm a Lebanese myself, Syrian cuisine is very similar to Lebanese cuisine. So it was really nice seeing my own like um, traditional food being represented in the book. But for my first question, if you were to recommend one food for everyone to try out, what would it be that were mentioned in the book? <laughs> um, I would recommend, uh, I'm not sure I'm saying it correctly, but harisi, which is a cake that's made out of semolina. And um, I've, I actually, as part of my research, went and to visit a Syrian refugee family. And that's what they served me. And it was delicious. That's nice. Okay. Also, you know, what, was, what would you yeah, recommend? I, mean, I, I grew up in the Middle East and I love, uh, you know, food from, you know, Egypt and Lebanon and Syria. Uh, everybody has, you know, their spin on, on uh, things that they eat. True. And I, and I, you know, uh, I love writing about food. If, if I wasn't a writer, I think I would have, you know, become a food writer or, or a restaurant critic. That would have been a great job. So for me, you know, the Alwan family eats a lot of traditional Syrian things. And, you know, her, their mother um, has a cooking class for um, Jordan's mom as well. Yeah. So I would really, you know, recommend eating. Um, I love grape leaves. So, you know, um, uh, have that as, as something you should have. Yes, what I love is, Amazing. <laughs> and especially Syrian Yelanji, right? It's 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 I think one of the best. So yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Also, for my next question. Um I've noticed in the book there were a lot of mentions of birds, um, especially with Nura and she her fascination with birds and their presence was very heavy in the book. I wanted to ask, like, where did the inspiration for the birds came from? Oh, I can answer that because I wrote on Nora's POV. Part of it was, uh, I mean, my writing process is uh, that I like to look at symbolism. I like to look at unique things that you can weave into a book. And this book had, um, you know, what really inspired me was Jordan is a swimmer. Yeah. So Shannon and I have a conversation, you know, um, these girls, one is, was, is practically a fish. And Nura, her personality is, you know, very much, um, you know, she's very much bird-like. She's very tiny. She, you know, she's very, um, you know, talkative. So for me, um, birds also represent freedom, right? So they're escaping. Um, so it was just a yin and a yang that it just complemented each other that, you know, there was this concept of water, of escape, of flying. So that's how birds wove themselves into the, into the story. That's actually really nice, honestly. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm gonna move on to Miss questions, Miss Anne's questions. Okay, uh, before I move on to my questions, Shannon, do you have anything to add to that answer? Uh, you know, the birds really were Nahid's idea. I thought they were great. Uh, they were a great addition. And I really beefed up all of the uh, fish mm -hmm. uh, references inspired by Nahid. You know, after she uh, brought the, the birds into it, I thought, well, I, we could really play this up. And, uh, and I thought they did a really nice job with the cover and, um, you know, in adding all the birds. And the fish. Okay. And yeah, the fish too, but. Okay, so I realized, like, as we were reading both Graham and I realized just how, like, well-researched and kind of 
fleshed out the writing was and everything all the concepts and themes was were so how did you exactly go about with your research so shannon let's start with you because i'm guessing there was a lot of research on your part um yes uh i did a lot of research before nahid and i ever got together or in or i would have had some major problems i'm sure um i read a lot of books about the syrian civil war um they were nonfiction. I read a lot of newspaper articles. I read a lot of, a lot of newspapers here in the United States have written profiles about Syrian refugee families. And there was uh, one a whole series in the Boston Globe that was really well done. And I researched Syrian food. Uh, I read a lot of recipes online. I met with a um, Syrian refugee family. I met with several refugee girls. Um, I asked questions about the resettlement process from uh, Janet Blair, who is a community liaison in Florida with, um, with uh, refugees. So a lot of it was uh, basically it was interviews and it was reading and I did a lot of uh, talking with my friend whose daughter converted to Islam we did a lot of discussion uh, around around that. Okay, okay. And what about me? How did you go about your research? So in this case was unique because uh, I um, had Shannon's manuscript that we reworked um, as a basis. Uh, but my usually writing process is I don't write a word until I've done all my research. So for me, I had already written Escape from Aleppo, which is about a Syrian girl whose family is escaping Aleppo during the war um, to, a, um, to, to the Turkish border. So I already had done my research and also my husband is a professor <laughs> of Middle East politics. So, you know, that's helpful. So we're a very political family. So all of my books tend to are heavy. I'm, one of my things that I feel is very important is that kids are really smart and they know what's going on, um, you know, in the country. Uh, my son is 13. He's very well with our election season coming up. He's very well aware of what's going on. And I think that if we talk about serious topics, um, current events, and we incorporate them into our work, kids really get it. And I think, you know, um, you know, my goal is, you know, if we have empowered, well-educated, I don't want to use the word education, right? Reading is not education, but through the joy of reading, they learn things. That's kind of um, very important to me. So for me, I, I, I grew up in the Middle East. My husband teaches Middle East politics. I had already written about Syria. So that um, was already there. And then it's being aware of current events. I mean, as we were writing, um, Shannon and I woke up one morning to that horrific shooting in New Zealand. And we were just, you know, we had a conversation later that day or that week. And we're like, this is terrible how hate converts into such violence. And we wanted to make sure that, you know, kind of that was in the book, not, you know, we don't have a shooting in the book, but the whole concept of how anger and violence leads to destruction. Yeah, and I think this is also something that I don't know if we have to discuss this, but I think I wrote this over on Twitter, how I would definitely recommend this book to like the young the kids that I know because I was a very I was a very, a very political child but like I was very interested in current events and politics so like for example I've already told my sister she is like a teenager I've told her that you're gonna love this book it's pretty great she is like just in that zone like the middle grade zone right now I told my younger cousin that he needs to read it he's like 12 so he's perfect for this book because as you said, it's a great like kind of a gateway because this is going to make them more interested in politics and current events. So I think this is great. So I'll move on to my next question, which is actually pretty fun. How much of yourselves do you think you put into Nora and Jordan respectively? So let's start with Nahi. Oh, Jordan. I think, you know, uh, an author's, you know, preferences, right, their likes and dislikes kind of make themselves um, weed themselves into the book. For me, it's food and I love to cook and I eat. So I think, you know, that's a big part of, you know, Nora and her family. Um, but also, you know, uh, Nora in many ways uh, is not like me as well. So what 
I do is I just, you know, uh, have, have actually, I have, you know, both, I'll say this, both, you know, Shannon and I are accountants by trade. So we're both a little bit analytical and when we're writing the book, we actually utilize a lot of technology, online technology. We use Google Docs to kind of um, work on uh, and create an outline for the book and keep it in track that way. So, um, you know, so it's both. The characters kind of um, have have our sense and our sensibilities in many ways as well. Okay, and what about you, Shannon? How much of yourself have you put into Jordan while writing about this? Um, like Nahid, it's a mix. Um, I have lost a son to sudden infant death syndrome, and so because I've lost a child, I think that's where Jordan's mom having a miscarriage came from uh, and those emotions around that. My uh, nephew is, swims the 200 meter butterfly. And I think that is where the butterfly came from. That's why that was the stroke that uh, Jordan swims. Um, but, you know, as Nahid said, there are parts that are not me at all. I am 5'3 on a good day and Jordan is six feet tall. So I kind of thought it was fun to write about somebody who was tall and I'm not very athletic. So I thought it was fun to write about somebody who, um, you know, is very athletic. It's always a mix, I think, uh, in order for a book to be interesting to an author. You can't just write yourself every single time. Uh, but parts of yourself always make their way into the story. Absolutely, I have to agree with that because I'm a writer too, so I am kind of still working on my trade. I'm not very good yet, yet, but hopefully one day, inshallah. Uh, so, Siham, let's pass it on to you now. Get us with your question. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what were some of your favorite themes to write in the book? that you really, really enjoyed writing? We could start with you, Shannon. Um, I was thinking about this as you were talking. I liked the, I liked the scene where Jordan goes over to uh, Nora's apartment and they make, um, they, I'm not gonna say this correctly. Uh, Kusamashi. Sure, I'll correct you. Kusamashi? Yeah, Kusamashi, yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I really had fun researching that. I found, a, I found an article online of a girl, an American girl who had visited Syria and she had actually made that with her Syrian friends. And so I read that and I thought, oh, I want to put that in the book. It's a very delicious meal. One that mothers more than once. Like they do that one more than one time in a month. <laughs> it's very repetitive. What about you, Nahid? I really enjoyed writing about um, Nora's reflections on Syria um, mm. and also the family dynamics. I, I you know, I, I love writing about families and the different personalities family members have and how they interact with each other. And I particularly loved Nora's father because, you know, he's such an amazing man who has herded his family, right? To safety and you know been lucky to get everything done to come to the U.S. as a refugee and you know just the humility he has you know he used to run a, a world-class hotel in Aleppo and, and now has become um, you know a very um, uh, he's a bus he's he's a, 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 um, a bellboy at a hotel and how he keeps positive and how they as a family keep positive. So that I really loved. And also I love writing the interactions between Jordan and Nora and how, you know, they're very different outwardly, um, you know, from where they come from and who they are, but in, inside they're very similar and they kind of want the same things and how they um, reach that um, conclusion. Um, that's amazing. Honestly, me and Rizan were talking about how um, it shocked us to see that the father, how he was like um, a hotel manager and then all of a sudden he, he sacrificed part of himself to become a bellboy. And we were talking about how refugees go and sacrifice a lot of things in order to have a second chance at living. And um, it honestly touched us so much and we really loved the book. 
Um, also, um, we just want to really thank you guys for really um, make, doing your research and putting a book like that out there. Because like Misam said, I wish I had a book like this to read when I was younger because we didn't get that representation back then. So really, thank you. <laughs> but moving on with my second question, I wanted to see um, if you guys were to um, envision Jordan and Nora five or 10 years from now, where would they be? <laughs> oh, an awesome question. Well, uh, uh, let's see. So they're in the seventh grade, right? So where does that put them? Seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. So they're 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 in high school. They're you know. Um, I would like to see uh, Nora being very active in her high school, uh, being in a leadership role, um, kind of leading and bringing her uh, fellow students together. Um, and I see her, you know, starting and being in a lot of clubs, uh, you know on climate change, on, you know, on, on you know, uh, coexistence and using their prayer room to really um, create a sense of community and um, change in her school. And I see her preparing for college to go on and, and you know, maybe ma majoring in political science and, you know, uh, teaching, uh, you know, about conflict and war and politics. Uh, as a professor, perhaps. I totally see that. <laughs> like, I can totally envision her as that. What about you, Shannon? Where do you see Jordan? I would like to see Jordan on the United States Olympic team, swimming the butterfly. And uh, I would like for her to use that platform um, for good, you know, to bring attention to um, the, the, all the situations that are going on in the world and um, just to be a goodwill ambassador. That's great. I also see her as that too. She's very powerful. She stands up for what's right, like her mother taught her as well. She's honestly so precious. But with that, I go back with Misan's questions now. Okay, so we have around five minutes left for the interview. So I'm gonna I'm gonna like condense a couple of my questions into one and just show them at you and see how that works out. So this book deals with a lot of really heavy topics like Islamophobia, xenophobia, racism in some parts, um, PTSD, anxiety. Um, there is a lot happening in this book. So what were the challenges that came with adapting such heavy topics into a middle grade book? Let's start with you, Shannon. Well, I think the one thing you always have to um, start with, with middle grade is the truth because kids are smart and they can handle the truth. The next thing you have to do is there always has to be a feeling of hope in a middle grade book. They're not quite as dark as young adult. And so I, you know, if something bad happens, I like to see it then balanced out maybe with a humorous scene. And Nahid was great at that. Uh, she was great at bringing uh, humor into the book. Um, I had written the scene where um, the boy drew the cartoon about ripping off Nora's hijab. And that was very uh, upsetting. And Nahid turned it around when she wrote that uh, you know, Nora actually laughed about it in the end. And so I think that's part of it too, is that you take something heavy, but you make sure that there is some humor. And I always think that these kind of books need to end on a hopeful note so that you show kids that, you know, even though there are bad things in the world, there are good things too. And uh, it's like that Martin Luther King quote, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. So you always want to have it bend toward justice. Yeah, I was yeah, actually I can... pretty surprised that like Nora laughed at the comic because I was not expecting that. So that was a great little twist and that really showed like how you guys managed to balance the flavors out. Nahid, you were saying something. Yeah, no, I concur with everything Shannon said. She said it beautifully. And as I said, you know, we're, uh, we're a very political family. My husband teaches Middle East politics. I've, I've been blessed to live around the world. And, you know, I always say this, CNN in the U.S. is very different than CNN internationally. 
And I, my, I really feel as if my role and my job as a writer is to share the truth, um, to lay out the facts so that kids can make up their own mind, right? So we, we you know, I, I think, she, you know, we try to um, show everybody's perspective, right? And even, you know, the bully who, who draws that picture has his own demons, right? So uh, I always say this, life is not black or white, it's shades of gray. And you know, and uh, I'll just reference, for example, in my first book in Shooting Kabul, um, there's Osama bin Laden uh, makes, makes a, uh, a, 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 he's part of the story. Um, but I like to sh tell kids is that, you know, um, Osama bin Laden used to work for the US um, in the Afghan war, right? So it's decisions that we make, um, whether good or bad, that, that leads us down the path that we end up at. So part of it is to show that through story um, and, sh and bring the humanity out um, in people um, through our characters in our books. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I think we have time for one more question. So if you have, if you have any, you go ahead. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go, I'll say it. Okay, so um, my final question would be, uh, what would you recommend to a reader to pick up after finishing Flying Over Water? We can start with you, Shannon. I would actually like to see them read Nahid's Escape from Aleppo, because I think that it's, it, if we had planned it, it would be, that could be a first book, and then you could have actually carried that character and her family into this book. But I think it gives you a, a real look at what a family is going through that, that flees Syria. Well, thank you for that, Shannon. And I'm going to piggyback on that and say one of the uh, greatest themes um, that, that really is resonating with me right now, and there's a huge movement in the United States called Black Lives Matter. Um, I think people, um, you know, you know, America is a nation of immigrants, but however, um, our, our African Americans were, uh, were enslaved and brought here. And there's a history here of unfairness and injustice. And finally, with Black Lives Matter, I think people are truly learning um, the how that plays out. So I would uh, recommend that you read Shannon's Ruby Lee and Me, which is a beautiful book about, you know, um, uh, an African American girl and a white girl. And um, I there's a new book that's just come out about Muhammad Ali. And I believe Kwame Alexander has written it. Um, I could be wrong. I'm sorry, Kwame, if I, I'm getting it wrong. It, but it, it's it's a wonderful book about uh, Muhammad Ali um, growing up as a little boy. So I, I haven't got my hands on it yet. So I'm actually looking forward to reading that. Those are some great recommendations. And I'll make sure to be checking them out. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. <clears throat> and with that, we have like a minute left. So I'm just going to conclude. Thank you so much for being here on my channel today, Nahid and Shannon. It was a pleasure to have you guys. We absolutely love your books. Like we finished it today. I teared up. I don't usually tear up in books. So that's something. <laughs> that is something. But both, both Siham and I, we were, we were extremely emotional after we just started texting each other. But yeah. Thank we you did so cry. Much. We did cry. <laughs> thank you so much for coming to our channel to my channel. Thank you so much for being a part of summer blog tours. And hopefully someday we will be able to host a couple of more blog tours for you. Thank you so much to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are awesome. And I really best of luck with summer blog tours. I, I know this is a new <laughs> initiative for you guys. You guys, it, it uh, you know, uh, best of luck and keep doing the good work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shannon. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, bye. Bye.